Hi friends, welcome to biologyexamswarrior.com. Today's topic is from Enzymology, a side-by-side -side comparison of lock and key model hypothesis and induced fit hypothesis. We will be discussing why is induced fit hypothesis widely accepted over lock and key hypothesis. Both these hypotheses explains the specificity of enzyme action. The first hypothesis that put forward to explain the specificity of enzyme action was lock and key hypothesis in 1984 by the famous Nobel laureate Emil Fischer. This was probably a very simplified explanation that easily explains the specificity of an enzyme for a substrate. Later this model was modified by Daniel Koshland and proposed induced fit hypothesis in 1958. So lock and key hypothesis for more than 50 years helped many researchers in enzymatic studies. Now moving into the topic, lock and key hypothesis as a term indicates the active side is a lock to which substrate fits like a key. This is an enzyme and this is the active side. The active side is perfectly matching with the shape of the substrate so that substrate can bind to the active site perfectly. So the shape of active site and the substrate is complementary forming enzyme substrate complex. Therefore any molecule which is having a different shape could not bind to the active site because of a different shape just like lock and a key. Whereas according to induced fit hypothesis, it's also called as a hand in a glove model. The binding of the substrate, the substrate binds to the active site and this causes a conformational change in the active site and both adjust their shapes to provide an optimal fit forming enzyme substrate complex and finally forming products. Here both the substrate and the active site of the enzyme interacts together to make the optimal fit just like a glove and a hand. Both glove and hand are just together to make an optimal fit. Difference number two regarding the active site. In lock and key hypothesis, active site is considered as very rigid and static so that a substrate with a complementary matching shape can bind to the active site. Whereas in induced fit hypothesis, the active site is flexible. You can see this is the substrate and on binding of the substrate active site changes its conformation and substrate also interacts and that results in precise orientation of catalytic groups in the active sites as we know that it is made up of amino acids. So it forms bonds and orient itself perfectly to accommodate this substrate. And this perfect orientation or precise orientation happens only on binding of the specific substrate or exact substrate. Therefore, if any molecule which is having a different shape or a structural, structurally similar shape binds to this active site may not form that precise orientation, therefore cannot form enzyme substrate complex, thus explaining the specificity. Now the final point is what are the limitations of lock and key hypothesis? Some enzymes with high specificity still obeys lock and key hypothesis. The major limitation is it couldn't explain non-competitive inhibition. Now we know that a non-competitive in inhibitor can bind to an allosteric site that causes conformational change in the active site. According to lock and key hypothesis active site is rigid so it won't change. Therefore this type of regulation it cannot be explained by lock and key hypothesis. Apart from that lock and key hypothesis couldn't explain enzymatic regulation by allosteric modulation and also the activity of many enzymes that is capable of binding to relatively different substrates. Here comes the advantage of induced fit model. It could explain allosteric regulation and other properties of enzymes. As you can see in this figure, this is the allosteric site. Allosteric site is a site in the enzyme other than the active site where an allosteric activator or inhibitor binds. So binding of this inhibitor or activator causes a conformational change in the active site that causes promotion of enzyme activity or reduces enzyme activity. As you can see, binding of this inhibitor 
causes conformational change so that the substrate cannot bind to this active site. So uh, as induced fit theory active site is flexible, it can explain allosteric regulation. Majority of X-ray crystallographic data suggests that enzymes undergo conformational change upon binding of substrate and both substrate and enzyme undergoes changes to make an optimal fit or optimal orientation forming enzyme substrate complex and finally forming the product. Therefore, induced fit hypothesis is widely accepted over Locke-Anke hypothesis even though some enzyme still works as per Locke-Anke hypothesis. And that's the difference between Locke-Anke hypothesis and induced fit hypothesis. If you find this video useful, please subscribe, share and like, support this channel. Thank you so much for your support.